we left off in Wild Arms, we had just finished the Lolithia's Tomb Dungeon, and we're back in the town of Adelheid for the Adelheid Festival. Hey, sir. My dinner was basically in the IRL post. Don't know what happened. It might take me a second to figure out where the game is going to go. I believe it's somewhere in the festival, though, town. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty perfect. The timing sounds like it's going to work out, too, because uh, it'll be even earlier for you guys. Since we don't have daylight savings on the U.S. until tomorrow, right? Golem is a thing that we dug up. Ruin Festival. I got a decent amount of money out there. Demon's real too. Everything is real. Did you play the video game before? The Ice Queen froze the enemy demons to death. 120 tons. How many pounds are in a ton? Let's talk about really useful units of measure for a good chunk of the people in chat. Lucky mole catching. Yes. Pulls me the moles out of the ground as you can. Peep out. Sure. It's harder to do than it looks. To be really close to them to actually trigger the pickup instead of a dash. Ten capture. Bolt revive. Alright, I'll take it. Try it again. <laughs> I just got Casually, I just throw these moles around. Bullet clip. All right. One of those are up to. Right. Just young at heart. I don't think I've ever actually had avocado toast. I like toast. What's the difference between putting avocado on toast and putting guacamole on toast? I guess I don't know what guacamole is. I assumed it was just like uh, juiced avocado. Oh, guac has other things in it? I didn't know that. Interesting. Diablo, a very powerful golem. Flamethrower for close combat. Tough but agile armor. Good hand to hand abilities. Nicknamed the Crimson Wind. But that's gonna end well. These golems are just here for fun. Nothing bad's gonna happen, right? Barbados! Barbados Slim? Ocean of Sand. God, the setting's so cool. Simba. 
economy of scale issue. Strike ball, fun for the whole family. Do you want to hear the rules? Throw the ball at the target, there are some nice prizes. The ball will bounce and we will see where it lands. Okay. That was incorrect. <laughs> Alright, well now I know. I'm charge. You fail. That's pretty great. God, what ball bounces like that? Jesus. <laughs> it's just a completely deflated ball. Like a deflated dodgeball. The ball with anger hamster inside. I don't know if I have any control over it. It's a pretty over the top sound effect, isn't it? Ah, So close. Hates tiny white circles and actively tries to avoid. I think the bounce is random. So you have to put it off center and hope it bounces in the right direction. Not worth it. Please help this woman. She's deeply distressed. My son is missing. He disappeared in the crowd. A red balloon. Okay. <coughs> Fragment of metal is extremely strong. Nothing able to duplicate it. Mithril. Asteroid from the Ocean of Stars. Selling extremely cheap goods. Ultimate chicken game. Man enough to hear the rules. The race starts on the line and ends at the wall. Stop as close as you can to the wall. If you hit the wall, you're disqualified. Okay. Oop. I don't call that courage, it's plain idiotic. That's ugly. Are you trying? I'm embarrassed for you. There is no risk. Go for it. I wonder if there's anything on the screen that I can use as a guide to press the button. It might be the flowers. I'm gonna try one more time. We go broke too, I guess. Yeah, I can honestly say that you are the bravest being in Fulgaia. And I got a magic carrot for it, which is not worth the effort of doing that. I had to press it, I pressed it right here, the tile before the flowers. Check all these barrels just in case. There's a kid with a balloon, maybe he's in another area. I have a feeling that that's progress. A time trial run. Run once around the track. Sure. It didn't cost anything. Seconds. I can do better than that. Oh, why is it letting me re enter my name there? That's weird. Oh, oh, okay. I understand. 9.9 9 seconds. Holy shit. Oh, there's no reward. A second. That's tough. Okay. 
Looking for a balloon kid. All the other ones are just consumables that I don't care that much about. Gary and Zolduk. Yeah, I hear that, you can bow. I so probably need to have a uh, Cecile back to do anything with that. They were using a different kind of magic during ancient times. That's deep. This game's localization is about as good as Final Fantasy VII's. Like, it's not completely awful, but it's also pretty questionable. It's funny. Hey, there's a kid. Wait, let go of your balloon, kid. An ominous balloon release. Oh, we're playing Final Fantasy VI now. Suddenly dark clouds hover over Adelaide. The laughter and murmur cease. As the unsuspecting people look up to the sky as they watch the silent nightmare spread over their heads. The sky is cracking. Beginning of the end is here. Jesus, okay. Man, shit went south real quick. It's all because that kid let go of his balloon. I don't remember this at all. I played this game in 1997, I think. Maybe 1998. Did they kill the kids? It was like props. They killed the kid! Holy shit! The balloon kid! I'm just not a big fan of the orchestral approach. I guess the original Dragon Quest games all had chip tunes. I'm a melody whore, that's my problem. Oh, it's interesting. If you stop, you can see what's going on with Cecile. Or dead kids. True. I guess like the core jingles I know and I enjoy, but I couldn't like hum any rando town theme from Dragon Quest 7, for example. Dungeon theme. I don't think that orchestral music isn't original. I really like John Williams as a composer.
controller is charging. If I move the cable too much, it loses connection. Turn to the castle at once, should. This little girl is dead, holy shit. How do I not remember those? I wonder if I could have killed all the enemies before doing this. people left are there. Shit. I know, right? Everywhere. They're lying on the ground like that. We don't have to check. That guy's actually dead. I thought he was just crawling. Do that puzzle. I think I'm meant to be able to go back to the that area at the start. I really like the way they handle buildings in this game. Instead of loading you in all the time. Actually buildings with multiple floors. Going to the festival. I've got two and a half minutes left to see what's in there. Careful with dashing because I don't want to accidentally run into an enemy. You know? This is a roadblock. Try another route. Although there is no other way out of the town, it says the monster. <laughs> Everything is burning. My house is burning. Watch there be one person who appears to be dead. He's actually not. I'm actually doing pretty well on number of saved people. So we'll see here soon. Good. Didn't get in any fights. Berserk. I think his name is supposed to be Berserk. Superior power is too good to use on humans. Get this message to one of the humans running into the castle. They don't give up the teardrop, we will tear the castle to pieces. That's, uh, Cecile's special item she uses to access certain dungeons and things. Golems here 
as the golems are good guys. Cool monster laughing sound. Don't panic. Pretty panicked, I'll tell you. I really like Western fantasy, it's a cool mix. The king has been wounded. Protect the king. Oh, thanks for letting me in. Appreciate that. Alright, Red Dead. Cat's been playing a lot of Red Dead too and enjoying it. Excited to try it. I've seen a couple of gifts pop up on Reddit. Industry Johan. Wounded badly, I was careless. Other men went away in time. Okay, go find Cecilia. Can't get my best spot to do that right now. Glad you're alright. Monsters are after you. Bust a feet. Monsters demand you surrender the teardrop or they'll storm the castle. Permitted. You won't do it. Two drop is not just an heirloom. It holds the key to unleashing the power of the ancients. What? One who hears the will of the guardians can use the teardrop to change the world. This isn't just like a western either. It's like western but with aliens. Alien elf. Western sci-fi fantasy. You can sneak out from there and give the demons a teardrop. It seems like a good idea. <laughs> I wonder why they went with a parrot as a save point. Very flavorful. Come again. A small crystal sphere that fits in the palm of a child's hand. Invaluable. Radiates a subtle heartbeat of pure magical light. Alhide is the light. Arctica is the ice. Both are from the ancient blood of benevolence. Alhide looked for the warmth of the heart. Arctica looked for the answers from the past. The thing that a man across from Check, you never know. You must return to your room. Ah, okay, so no bumping into guards. I wonder if it actually checks how many times you miss them. be something that she'd be able to access with her powers, right? I 
Maybe I just need to not talk to the guard, like I can approach it, but can't cross their line of sight or something. That might be how it works. This is a dead end. Juked. Go away. Maybe the only one that actively chases me like that. Ah, never mind. Wish I could, like, use an ability on him to slow him down. Do you want to see what that chest was? Oh no! Alright, well, I learned where I can go. I saw a chest that I skipped, so I'll try to go for that this time. Basically, touch a guard. So if they see me, it's fine. If I'm even really close to them, it's fine. Shoot this guy and get to that chest that I skipped. Hey, they have a slight random effect on their movement. 200 yellow, it's not a big deal, but they could... Shoot. Every time this happens, somebody dies. <laughs> Maybe, I'm not sure. It didn't seem to track how many people I saved earlier. Maybe I could have found them in the castle before talking to the king. They would have given me a reward, maybe. Careful with dashing, you don't accidentally run into a guard. Okay, so don't go down here. Ah! Jesus. Okay, so their location is saved even if I change maps. Yikes. I've learned something new. I wonder if I can get away with using the watch, maybe. They're coming after me. I don't know if it's actually going to help or not. It just resets the screen I'm on. Oh, it doesn't actually change their position at all. That's interesting. This is a tough sequence. The guard pathing is completely random, I think, as far as I can tell. Like, it tries to come... maybe it's not completely random, but it generally tries to come at me, but then it starts, like, zigzagging. So I can't reliably juke. Change who the person in the front of the party is, right? And be like, oh, you're not the princess, that's fine. You do whatever you want. Randos in the castle. Okay. 
There's a guy in this hallway up here that I have to juke immediately on the right. I think there's also a chest on that side, so... Woof. Okay. Well, I learned another door. Maybe she should rethink this whole plan of giving the magical artifact that will save the world to the bad guys. Needs of the mini, Cecile. This guy and head right if I can. The rest of here. Ugh. <laughs> if I can just get to that chest once, I've got it forever. I just don't have any room in that hallway to avoid the guy. Just for funsies, what does happen if I try one of the other characters and leave bombs behind me? Is it stun them? Bomb these poor people to death? Bombs do not. Hamster does anything either. It's the only room I could potentially juke him in. Ah, holy shit. Let's just get the chest, then we'll never have to worry about it again after that. It'll be great. Totally worth it. That's probably the most valuable item in the entire game. Is it people I rescued? I think it is. I'm sober. Press graph lets me equip a new spell. Uh, Cecilia. It's pretty important. Moonstone. What is that? Nullifies poison. It's not terribly exciting. Alright, we just gotta try this door. Does this get us in trouble? Alright, so the answer must be somewhere inside the, the kitchen, I think. It's the last place that I haven't fully explored. I might be able to get away with talking to the chefs. I don't know if they would turn me in. No choice. Thanks, Chef. Wow, that's a fucked up cellar door. <laughs> just a pit that you fall into, and then you land on a. I guess it's just a Star of David. It's not a. Uh, 
hell of a seller. Getting used to the system at the beginning where I give the important thing to the monsters. It's gonna be great. Good idea. This is PS1. This is a very early PS1 game. It came out the same year as Final Fantasy VII. them for not going for the full 3D for the whole game though. Very few devs are able to resist that temptation in the early PS1. I was like, oh man, 3D. I feel like the rad guitar chord is started kicking off every battle in the game. Try to conserve her MP a little bit. In case there's a boss fight in here. I think MP is a little bit harder to come by in this game than it is in uh, some other RPGs. Although I think that Cecilia gets some powers and lets her drain him be so. Power Apple. Follow my usual strategy. Main character gets all the stat ups. Well, I guess I can't say 100% for sure that I'll always have Rudy in my party in this game. I don't remember. We've already done several perspective shifts, so you don't even have to start by playing as him. Gamora Toad runs away? Alright. Preemptive strike! Oh, sorry, I thought, thought you were someone else. Later. Hey, Sailor Dan, how's it going? This game is called... Uh, Wild Arms, and it is a Western sci-fi fantasy game from the very first PS1 titles. This is uh, one eye sub-block, and then after this, for a couple hours, we're going to play Cultist Simulator, which is very difficult to describe. Kind of an idle game, roguelike, sort of. distinguished from a lot of its peers at the time. It's has a lot in common with Luthia too, so there's a lot of uh, dungeon puzzles involving 
the three different characters have. He's got a hamster that he can throw, open chests, for example, cross gaps. She can reset puzzles and interact with certain things. I don't think I've gotten all the tools yet. Several other ones. I know, right? Have you seen Put the Simulator before, Dan? Also, how's the new house coming? Yeah, I don't like random encounters. It is very different. <laughs> Whatever you think it is, it's not that. I think random encounters are done in most cases because it's less work to set an encounter rate. If you're going to have enemies appear on the map that you can avoid, that requires designing the whole level around it. Nice. You have like a shed in the back that you want Ethernet to? Is that what you're doing? Hey Ben, how are you little guy? Hi, Ben. Hi. It's not Marty, that's Ben. Hi. No, Cammy, that's Ben. Hi. You, you, you. Close enough. Well, that's cool. I can see wanting Ethernet in there. What are you going to use it for? Hi, Ben. So little. You're lucky you're snuggling during a JRPG second. To give you attention. Okay, VR, beer fridge. Oh, VR is cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's gonna be nice. Have you had a space where you, know, you could crank the surround or. No, I had my rock band drums in a box for like five years because I couldn't use them in the apartments I was in. We just finished ordering new beds for the previously Captain Donovan's bedroom which we gave their beds to them. Or what we previously had as guest beds. I love you too, Ben. You're very cute. Hot tub from eighty seven? Oh boy. Smell the dead leaves. I don't know how inspection put that together. I want to get that chest in the bottom left corner, but I don't know if I want to get into enough random battles to find out how to get down there. I might be able to throw the hamster at it. Gate is set so you probably can't hear Ben purring. He is hardcore purring right now. So happy. Let's see if I can hit this chest with a, uh, a hamster. 
Constitution. Yeah, Lindsay was telling us that at the pumpkin carve. So after you get in the new place, he meows a lot now. He's like really needy. I always give Ben attention. Andrea gives me shit for it. He wants to come snuggle at night. She maybe gives him the attention he wants. One third of the time. I drop everything. Because I have no self-respect. Don't leave again. I reach that. Hey, that totally worked. Nice. I like that about this game. Let's see if I make it to the. Uh... Make sure to get that to say. See if I make it to the world map. The world map theme in this game is like an actual ripoff of uh, Ecstasy of Gold by Ennio Morricone. It's the same melody. Later, sir. Good time at work. Good travels. Is he doing wet food? Dan's cat Simba, we've kitty sit for him before, uh, does not have teeth. His teeth had to come out. But he usually eats very, very soggy dry food. What are you doing, Ben? <laughs> I took a shower right before stream. I think he's trying to get his scent back on my head. Yeah? Uh-huh. Wet food's a treat, I see. I feel like the cats, our cats would cause less destruction if we let them have dry food. Uh, we've only stuck to it because our, the foster people we adopted from insisted on wet food only. Alright, whatever. Okay. Oh, this is like we gotta dodge, right? And you sat in a really awkward position. I try my best. What's up, dude? Belzelk. I love how the localization dude's like, yeah, that's probably what they meant. They probably meant Belzelk, not Berserk. Don't worry, I'm a busy guy. Give me the two drop, you won't see me again. Demon, I don't know you got here. This is gonna end well. Break so deep. You guys don't make very good toys. A dance, okay. Now's the time to use my gun. So the main character has one of the only guns in this universe. Or rather, maybe there are a decent number of ancient relic guns, but nobody feels comfortable using them. Practically, boss fights are actually pretty tough in this game. Tuned aggressively. It's at uh, three o'clock or four o'clock Mountain Time. Some another hour and ten minutes.
should do another behind the scenes of beating cats. Marty just non-stop meows. It's so pathetic. Alright, see it. Continue the tradition of tuning in on JRPG Day. Well, I guess you popped in for um, FTL. You paid someone with the Smith's Butcher? Maybe. Special kitty treats. Arm lock on. Don't think it makes it do extra damage, I think it makes it really accurate. I'm not 100% sure. On that. Might have to go down to Santa Fe. Interesting. I haven't been terribly adventurous with, uh, with meat. Andrew's birthday, we had an appetizer that had beef cheek in it. Oh, how is it? It was... It wasn't sold as that. That's that's what it was, but the name of the menu item wasn't beef cheek. And it's like, they're trying to conceal the fact that I'm eating a cow's face off. God. It's pretty good. Get more mushrooms in my diet. I apparently really liked mushrooms when I was a very young kid, and uh, one of my uncles, like my parents' friends, influenced me and said, "Oh, why do you like mushrooms? Mushrooms are gross." And I refused to eat them after that. My parents were pissed at me. I haven't really had them too much in my adult life. I just haven't been in a situation where we really. I would agree with that, Yahan, yeah. I still honestly would prefer that we get a uh, lab grown meat working, because that sounds great. We can remove the suffering elements altogether. Bring the cost down. If I were to stop eating meat, it would probably be the sustainability problem. Just the amount of energy that has to go into producing a steak. It's a lot of waste, it feels like. How you been, Retro? I think I've had Tongue. Tongue's really chewy. Wasn't the biggest fan. The lab grown cat food. That should be their first pass, I think, Yukupo. I mean, cat food's already great F meat. Something that's reasonable for cats. Cat cameras, but it's so cute. So that uh, you can see all the cat hair that he leaves on my. Seems like the big challenge right now is you can. Pretty much nail um, 
You can nail ground beef with lab grown meat, but you can't do anything more complicated than that. I have trusty friends. With their help, I will reclaim the teardrop. This theme is pretty awesome. The game soundtrack is rad. I enjoy it. Anyway, but she shouldn't come. It'll just slow us down. What? A dream chaser. So faithful guy is no lie. <laughs> Squabbling here while Dad dies. Is oh, she gonna cut her hair? It's heavy with the weight of its destiny. <laughs> oh shit! I've seen them in many games, a couple of movies. And he's dead, Zark. Heavy with the weight of its density. <laughs> Yeah, I believe it, Yaha. I mean, most of my exposure to it has been in fancy restaurants. Stage is set for the fall of Logaya. This doesn't sound like PS1 compressed music. This might be like an actual mp3 on the disc. Oh, it's definitely, okay. The ones are rendered by the PS1 sound chip. Props to Wild Arms story. It's a pretty unique story direction. It's a pretty unique setting. It's got some traditional JRPG stuff. Well, that's the opening credits. Wow, right on. That's cool. You guys, some sweeping views of Ben during this king funeral. Localization's not great. It's not terrible, but it's about as good as Final Fantasy VII. It was right before they started to really spend money on it and take it seriously. So sleepy. week on the date of the king's death. Oh wait, date of the attack. Just a speedrunner. 
for now. Right. <laughs> this is what you should expect. When you stand still, it shows you where the split party members are. Premium Mars Ben. So little. Oh, done, Ben. Pull the cable out of the controller, Ben. know my way through this level now. I think Andrea on Google Hangouts and let her know that Ben's being cute on stream. Oh, live in her day. I don't think I can reach over there though without upsetting him. It's so interesting that he just started doing this. It was when she was out of town and I was streaming really late every day. Puzzles with the dash and a lot of puzzles with the different tools. Hey, thanks, D Rock. How you been? The Jetsons Cogswell's Caper? I haven't heard of that one. What system is it for? Is it good? Don't forget about Minister Johan. He's feeling bummed out. <laughs> oh, this game's localization is funny. Is he in the king's bedroom or something? Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. He's trying to secure it. That sounds like speedrun. Is it like a side scroller? Oh, cool. Nice. I feel like you had this window from the NES to the Super Nintendo where it was actually possible for a licensed property game to be pretty good. And then around the end of the Super Nintendo, it was just garbage on parade with like of exceptions. What are good recent-ish license games? Riddick was pretty good. Arkham Asylum in that series is pretty good. New Marvel. But like way back in the day, you'd have like no, the Turtles game was super solid. The uh, Ducktales game was amazing. Yeah, I hear that. Do the Lego games count? I think so. I think they count as good. Although, the Lego game was kind of like settled into a, uh, a formula pretty quickly, didn't they? Yeah, kind of samey after a while. Let's 
Star Wars games are decent. That's true. Yeah, they were good even back in like the Super Nintendo. Super Return of the Jedi. Yeah, like Jedi Knight, Knights of the Republic. Just a marketing tie-in. Yeah, there's some really bad ones, really, really bad ones. And then, you know, Burger King would come out with Sneaking. You'd be like, what is happening? I'm trying to find the bummed out minister here. That we, let me be here. Trying, we checks quest. No time to eat. A couple of those Super Nintendo ones were pretty good. What was that saying? Not fast. Get the uh, magic map. Hmm. Cool spot wasn't bad for the Super Nintendo. There was a Chester Cheetah game that wasn't terrible. Oh, we don't actually have the crystal tier anymore, even though we killed the guy. That's weird. Even Ben? Hi Ben, it was very nice. Now I can actually use two hands again. Yeah, Mick Kids was the shit. I can't believe they gave that for away for free and a Happy Meal. It's an incredibly solid. It's hard. Probably the only thing that's off about it. And it's not even like unfairly hard. You made the exact same game, but you know, baked infinite lives into it, it'd be totally fine. Yeah, the soundtrack was awesome. I have no idea where the minister is. I'm just gonna have to do a clean sweep of the place. He must be back here somewhere. Mick Kids is definitely one of those, like, how, <laughs> how did this happen? Shit, there's a bunch of treasure in here. Awesome. Game license directly from a book besides Rainbow Six. Hmm. There are a couple okay Lord of the Rings games, but I guess those are more licensed from the New Line films. Yeah. I have to think about it more, though. The Witcher, right? Shaman Princess of the Guardians, and I'm proud to be the innocent one. Go west to the mountain pass, and you'll find the town of Milama. There you'll find a large shrine. If you're the innocent one, you must go there. Harry Potter games all pretty good movies. All of them? 
remember there. I remember the window when Harry Potter was a very popular book series, but had not yet been adapted as a film. It was pretty quick that it got an adaptation, but it wasn't immediate. They've been making Tom Clancy games for a really long time, right? Was Splinter Cell the first one? Oh, there was a Rainbow Six before Splinter Cell? Really? video game out of that? Yikes. Southwest Mountains. Bridge must have been blocked earlier. Should have gotten an extra spell for... Cecilia, before coming here, I'll make sure I get a next town. I'm gonna make sure I start making some progress here so I know what to do next session. I do eventually get a tool that lets me light lamps. Mm, yeah, water margin. And all of the uh, the very, very, very many Romance of the Three Kingdoms games. The entire Dynasty Warriors series. Actually, the the f classic the four classic Chinese novels all have a shitload of video games and other media that are inspired by them. Journey to the West is a lot. Later acquired. Sweet. Oh, it's like a Zippo. through there. So much bend here on me. I 
just spend my life covered in cat hair. Probably shouldn't wear black. I have a lid roller, but it's an uphill battle. Source of joy to Andrew and I, Andrew and me. Probably overall less effort than on your dog. Although dogs, if they make a mistake, they might care to change their behavior. Cats, very much less so. outside of combat. Any, uh... Cures disease, cures paralysis, cures bad omen, cures... Uh-oh, that's not good. Double Gela and XP. Presumably for a single battle. Some games let you get away with that, where you like equip the thing that makes you immune after you've been afflicted with the status effect, and it removes it for free, and then you can unequip it freely. I love how Rudy's luck is the worst. It's funny. That does so much damage. Holy shit. I'm gonna have to leave. Go buy some. Holy crap. That might be the most punishing poison I've ever seen in a video game. Ten steps and she's almost dead. And I think it lasts forever if I don't have a way to recover it. It'll give me a chance when I go back to the town to uh, get her more spells. I think I prefer status effects to go away at the end of combat. Um, I don't know, we've talked about it, but like, being stocked on status recovery items is generally not interesting. Unless if your game is like, uh, Darkest Dungeon or something. I think at the end of the day, even just having different status recovery items for different status effects is flavorful, but not always interesting mechanically. You can probably count on two hands the total number of softs I've ever used in video games or echo screens.
Oops. Oh, they're wear off? No, never mind. Her hair is purple, so she's still poisoned. It makes sense. That is true. They're crepuscular, right? Sleep all day and all night. Kind of active at dawn and dusk. It's time to eat. Wow, Cecilia took damage during the turn transition. Poison is punishing. Holy crap. Diurnal means active during the day. Humans are diurnal. Crepuscular is active at dawn and dusk, but not active during the day and at night. I might be able to kill her to get rid of the poison. I don't know how death works in this game. I don't like if I had a character die. Like if they revived to 1 HP afterward. This is the town that I'm technically banished from. I don't know if they'll let me sleep here. Not allowed to talk to you. Talk to other people? Friend caused this mess. Nothing to sell here. You want to know why? Ask your friend. Such jerks. Western guy. And he lives in this town. Everybody likes him, but secretly he uses a gun, which is uh, against the law. So this little girl gets trapped in a cave, and Rudy goes and saves the day, and he uses his gun to rescue her. They all find out that he's an arms user, and they exile him and say that the reason bad things happen in the first place is because as a gun user he must have cursed the town. Just about to find out if staying at the inn recovers status of those. Nope, it does not. Probably should have bought a item first. Hold on. Antidote, please. Or anything to spend money on, but I don't ever want to run out of status recovery and again little dungeon. Here's confusion. Here's forgetfulness. buy a bunch of heal berries so that I can be self-sufficient in the dungeon. He's already topped off on gear. It's cheaper than staying at the end again, I think. Or it's comparable at least. The game's soundtrack is really good. Okay, 
Gucci. Played several JRPGs that have an enemy called a balloon that, like, is much more threatening looking than a balloon. So I wonder if the Japanese word for balloon has multiple meanings. Or if balloons in Japan are more threatening. Or if there's a similar word in Japanese that can easily accidentally be localized to balloon. Oh, I can trip and fall on the rocks, that's cool. We gotta be quick if that runs out. Can't run too much because of the rocks. The balloons make a loud popping sound, so they're pretty horrified. But... I guess that kid letting go of his balloon effectively led to the apocalypse earlier in this game. I like Cecilia's new costume in this. Teams that have a female lead who cuts her hair. FF9 does it too. It must have been why it felt familiar in FF9, because I played uh, this game already. Okay, it's just that chest. Japan is just concerned about the depleting story of helium. Birthday grade helium. Recently, that the uh, Comedy Central seasons of uh, Futurama get a lot of shit. They're still really good. Some really good ones in there. There are a couple of meh ones. I guess the scene to scene of Futurama is always good. The early seasons, the Full episodes are probably better. Yeah, they're less consistent, that's a good way to put it. I think one of the best episodes of the entire show is a Comedy Central episode, though, the um, time travel one. The one where they, they make the machine that can only travel forwards in time. There's a couple that feel like they're the result of Comedy Central meddling. There's one with Wanda Sykes, where she's like a soda machine. It's really odd. The nostalgia can take over too. I don't care as much for season one, actually. I mean, it's fine. I still enjoy those episodes. They're good. It just feels kind of off. That makes me. Uh, be less judgy toward season one of Disenchantment, which feels a little bit off in certain ways. But like seasons two through five of Futurama are fantastic. And the first movie's pretty good. Second movie's not as good, but it's still good. And then the D&D movie's kind of bad, although it has a couple good jokes. And the fourth movie is really weird. Like, this line is from the fourth movie. Oh my god. Oh my god! Although actually it was sort of obvious. So again, the scene to scene is pretty funny here and there, but like, the premise of it is fucking bizarre. I think part of it, they just don't do well with long form. 
It's uh, limitations breed creativity kind of thing. Nice, yeah, hunt. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to do this Movember thing and grow a really awful looking each fuzz stash. We'll see how long it takes before I hate myself and give up. The longer a comedy goes on for, the worse it gets. Yeah. Start flanderizing the characters. And I like the later episodes of Futurama, but Fry definitely becomes like a complete idiot. Where he's just kind of an everyman at the beginning. <laughs> Even that leads to some pretty funny jokes. There's like one when, uh, I think it might be the last season, it's a, yeah, I think it's the last season where they go to hell to talk to the Robot Devil to get Calculon's soul back, and uh, Robot Devil secretly wants to get rid of Calculon because he's annoying, so he's like, for Calculon's immortal soul, guess the number I'm thinking of. Uh, it's between one and three, not including one or three. Fry is like, M! Is he right? Yes, the number I was thinking of was the letter M. <laughs> it's like, it's really, really stupid, but it's funny. Go to Hobo Beard. Man, I've tried so many times, Yahan. This is the best I can do. This is like unfettered, unshaped growth from like... 13 years? I needed this originally so that I didn't look like I was like 14 when I was in my mid-twenties. But I keep going to try to do this and this, and this gets really patchy and this gets really peach fuzzy, and I start to hate it and I give up. But we'll see if we can make it all the way through November. I'll look real gross on stream. Or I'll like get a Snapchat filter or something to put a cartoon beard on me or something. That probably exists, right? Okay. <laughs> Juggling two topics at once. Futurama is a good show. And shaving. The dwarven beard thing going on. Check the other side here real quick. Yeah, it's a save point. That's good. I think this game has tents. Not sure though. No. I don't like shaving. I do like really lazy shaving. I have one of those electric razors. There you go. Sounds like there's a lot of character customization in that. It's like uh, San Andreas. Don't love shaving, but how beards feel. Something of Castaway. Yep. Do you like Beard Sky Mom? I kind of like that they're in vogue now. 
I think uh, Captain America looks way cooler with a beard. I like that tattoos are becoming likely permanently socially acceptable. I don't have any, but they look cool. I like that like my mortgage banker has a tattoo. Some nasty winds. Oh that's right. Uh the hamster can talk. Gust of wind, if I could harness the power. Fast draw hint acquired, what? Oh, so other things are gonna have to happen in the story. That's cool. Yeah, that's why I'm I'm rebelling against my family. My mom has purple hair and both of my parents are covered in tattoos and piercings. So is my sister. I don't have any. They said my ear pierced when I was a kid. Post up. Not opposed to it, just haven't really done it. <laughs> Straight edge rebel son. I don't even listen to metal anymore. I do listen to something. My parents are really into like the vocal metal scene in Columbus, Ohio. So I do very much like uh, high quality metal, well produced, well written. If you've ever been in a local concert scene, metal's probably the worst for a local band because they kind of get to hide their flaws. It was at the point where I had been to so many local metal shows with my family that going to see like a, like a bar band, like a band that just played covers, the fact that they could all competently play their instruments was, would blow my mind. I would be like, oh my god, they're so good. Like, Are they really? They're kind of just able to play. I know, it's so impressive. You know, full soccer play is just boring. Okay. I'd have, I'd struggle to pick the tattoo, I think. There's some subject matter that I could probably say, yeah, i get a tattoo of that. I'd probably get a Zelda tattoo, for example, but like, picking the specific design, would, I would agonize over it. All right. Get some in trouble sometimes. Yeah, right. It's it's option paralysis problem for me too. I would do it. No take backs. My parents don't get a uh, don't get along terribly well with like church lady types. If you've ever seen the SNL sketch, gossipy, passive aggressive. So I think the tattoos and piercings are like a shield against that. They're they're definitely not going to mess with you. You're not going to go to the church that has people like that, they're not going to let you in the door. That's not perfect. <laughs> I also have a lot of anxiety about getting a bad tattoo. I could probably fix that. I could probably find someone that's pay a premium for it. 
look at their catalog. It's not going to be perfect. It is not something that I would try to get out of a discount for sure. I'm a penny pincher, really frugal, and I hate spending money, but. I almost always try to get the cheapest thing. Yeah, yeah. Some both option paralysis, choose a therapist. I know, right? I've had that with uh, anxiety preventing me from going to get anxiety medication because I'm anxious about what the anxiety medication is going to do to me. Do you have a uh, like a general practitioner who can make a recommendation that can at least alleviate some of the choice? I think that's how Andrea got her therapist. The doctor just recommended somebody. Money mo. Uh, I think with a therapist, I don't even know. I mean, I've only really had experience with like B3 therapists. Or my dad, Andrea's therapist, and then her nurse practitioner. But at the end of the day, it's probably going to be more about just whether or not you mesh with them. And the E Mini Money Mo is going to be your best shot at that, I think. Still can't do it easily. Actually, uh, streaming has helped me a lot with option paralysis. I'm usually a lot worse about it, but I get a lot of practice now being in situations with video games where I kind of just have to pick one and go. And I don't know if that's helped at all in my normal real life. But there's tons of times on stream where I'm secretly agonizing. Or if, I, if I'm publicly agonizing, I'm agonizing much worse underneath it all. Oh, that's really frustrating. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I've never had a general practitioner either outside of when I lived with my parents. No, that's happening to my friend back home. Um, he uh, had a really bad breakup, like suicide bad breakup. And uh, I was really pushing him because he was coming to me for help. He's like, dude, you, you really, you gotta go to the therapist. You gotta go to the therapist. And he started to go and he was like, dude, it's like $60 a session. And that, that's a shitload of money when you're poor. Um, I'm like, well, 
you know, talk to their office, see if they can help you, see if you can get on Medicaid, which is our uh, health care for people at very, very low income levels. And it's at the point where he's having to choose between, like, eating and going to his therapist so he doesn't kill himself. And, like, he uh, applied for Medicaid and got denied because he is, like, a, a delivery driver. So some months he does pretty well, and some months he doesn't do so well. And he definitely qualifies for Medicaid based on his annual income. But they said because he made too much money in a really busy month in the summer, he doesn't qualify. And he has to intentionally make less money in a given month, so that no one month he makes too much. And he's continuing to have to choose between going to his therapist or doing nothing. It's... It's horrific. It's so awful. And it's a situation where, like, basically everybody in this country either has interfaced with this problem or knows someone who's interfacing with this problem. It's, it's like a 70, 75 percent plus people recognize that there's an issue. I've definitely made decisions like that, and you know, my, my sister Robin, she's a hairdresser, so she doesn't get insurance through her job. She has decided to not go to the hospital, and she really needed to go to the hospital because she didn't want to get hit with a bill that she wouldn't be able to pay. Yeah, same here. I uh, I got laid off, and I had my motorcycle at the time. And that was the one time that I wiped out in the motorcycle. Somebody swerved in front of me and sat on their brakes, and I swerved out of the way, and my wheel locked. And I got a huge road rash around, along the entire bottom quarter of my back. There's still a giant scar there. Um, and I didn't have insurance because I just got laid off. I had applied for a new job, but I needed to be working there for like 90 days to get past the trial period and get insurance. So I didn't go to the hospital, I just put a bunch of Bactine and paper towels on my back. Yeah, the problems are problems and that's okay and it's frustrating to deal with, but like, what I long for is a situation where if you're sick, you go to the doctor. You don't think about it. Maybe shit gets frustrating after the fact, but there's never a should I go to the doctor question. It should just be an obvious absolutely, yes. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh no, it's infuriating. It it should not be a political issue. I'm not even close to invoking political quarantine because it's not it shouldn't be. It's stupid that it even kind of is. The math suggests that it's the way to go. You should be able to support it just from like a very strictly pragmatic business standpoint. Like, this costs us more if we don't do it this way. I don't, I don't get it. It is an actual why don't they just question. Yeah. We can get into a little bit. It's not... I don't recognize most of the faces in chat. Um, there's, there's some kind of attitude about I don't want to be paying for other people's care. Like, I got mine, fuck y'all. I don't know. That attitude makes me very sad that anyone can have it. From any background. Oh, that was a wow, I'm really glad I double checked that shit. Magic map, heck yeah. 
shows known towns. So it works when I'm outdoors. What does that branch do? That's the attitude and they don't have theirs. Well, see, what gets me is it's not so much that's the attitude until they don't have theirs. They'll then not have theirs and they'll see what it's like and they'll go back to having again and won't remember. It's... it's hurts <laughs> to think about. Water Village and Milano keep going south. Okay. Yeah. And no one in history has ever made another print. I haven't made it on my own. Stopping is it now? Is it corporate pressure? I know the insurance lobby is pretty powerful. Yeah. I heard a useful quote recently, not relevant to what Aki's saying, but what Yukiko said that uh, to the privileged equality seems like oppression. I think it's, it's okay to be privileged, and like, just because you are privileged doesn't necessarily mean that your effort is meaningless. You have real problems. Um, human beings are... We're wired to be dealing with things like bear attacks. And most humans don't have to deal with actual bear attacks. So our brain still has to stress out about something and it's going to stress out about whatever is stressful in your life, whether that's putting food on the table or being anxious at work but having most of your basic needs met. I think it's useful for people to just be aware of like... Yeah, you worked for it, you... you earned what you have, but just know that you had a little bit of a head start over at least one other person on the earth. It's a very shifted debate. Social security too. For the non-US viewers, we have a system in the US that when you get to be paid into it your whole life, and when you're 65 you get paid a stipend so that elderly people don't die homeless in a box side of the street. Pretty popular program for the most part. It's got a 10 gallon hat. I think that goes on Jack, I would guess. person in their life that lets that old in. That's, that's a very common experience. I've had that happen to my uh, grandmother, a very sweet lady. Um, very Christian as well. She's a Lutheran deaconess. Uh, the minute she met an actual real-life gay person, her attitude completely changed. 
you need to know one person. And it's like, what boogeyman is in your head? People are people, right? <laughs> like, it's just interesting. What were you expecting? And I can't complain too much about it. I'm, I'm glad that you know she's changed her opinion on it. But it was, it was immediate. It was like one dinner. She was like, oh, wow, they're just people. Like, <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> Hey, thanks, man. How you been? Yeah, it's true. I think it's uh, it's something we have to be very, very careful with. I think that the the South Park enlightened centrist attitude of well, everything's just all the same and everything sucks. And it's two sides of the same coin. It's kind of frustrating, but South Park did make a pretty good point recently. Uh, they were doing this storyline about Cartman, Cartman having a girlfriend, and obviously Cartman is a horrible person. So this girl starts dating Cartman, and everyone is really shitty to her because of it. They're like, how could you do that? You idiot. Like, clearly Cartman's an evil asshole. Why would you associate with him? And it kind of has the opposite effect on that. Like, it, when she sees that people are treating her so awful, she basically has no choice but to double down on Cartman. Because when she tries to break up with him, they're like, oh, thank God, you finally got out of it. I can't believe what's wrong with you, why it took you so long. You know? But it's like, I feel it. I feel it as a very natural human reaction to say, what took you so long? Why did you have to personally meet somebody to not be shitty to them? You hear that, like, Sir de Berta? Or, um... Oh man, what was the name of the... Mahora, maybe? I like the Eleven soundtrack. It's pretty chill. Guardian worship. It's a pyramid far to the north here. We couldn't enter the chamber because it was sealed by magic. Fortunately, I don't have my magic tier anymore. Because somebody gave it up. The bad guys. like this magic system and you can like you combine two elements in this grid and either white or black magic and they all have unique effects and then you can name the spell and then uh, if you don't like the spell you can get rid of it blank it out and then get a different one instead probably not gonna do it today we have about 20 seconds left but I'll try to make a note uh, Future Mars said, when you're watching this VOD to find out what the hell is going on, you need to explore this town and go to the magic shop and pick three new spells for Cecilia. I'm gonna go ahead to the save point and we'll uh, take a short break for a couple of simulator here. Yeah, they're fantastic. I really like this game soundtrack and I've heard, I think, all of Wild Arms 2 and 3 and maybe a couple of the other Wild Arms spin-offs on Rainwave before and I like all of them. Who's the composer? Did they do any other games? could probably ask this in a previous session. Okay, I will be back in a few minutes. I'm actually going to run to the restroom as well, and we'll play some Cultist Simulator. See you guys soon.